Join us now for Education Matters, a weekly look at the real people and real stories in education across North Carolina. Welcome to Education Matters, presented by the Public School Forum of North Carolina. I'm Keith Poston. This week's show is our 100th episode since we launched in late 2016. So we want to do something special for this milestone, which is why the set looks different than usual. We also have a live studio audience here for the very first time. So our sincere thanks to all of you, our viewers who tune in or stream or listen to the audio podcast every week. And thanks to our sponsors who help make this show happen. For the 100th episode, we are tackling an emotional subject. As a parent of a teenager myself, and with many friends and family with teens and adolescents, it's a topic and a fear I hear about more and more. How can I keep my child safe? No, not from school shootings, although that's real. How can I make sure my child is okay when the threat is from inside, maybe hidden? The rate of teen suicide in North Carolina has doubled in the last 10 years. Self-harm among 10 to 14-year-old girls in the U.S. has nearly tripled since 2009. Nearly one in seven U.S. children and adolescents has a mental health condition, and sadly, half of those will go untreated. This week, we're going to explore this often difficult topic with a panel of experts to try to understand the real facts and where do we go from here. We're also going to meet a Wake County mother who lived through the unthinkable when her middle, middle school-aged son took his own life. Before we go any further, I want to point out that if you or someone you know needs help, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. And we're going to have that on the screen during the show. I want to introduce our first guest. First to my left, we have Dr. Carrie Brown. She is the Chief Medical Officer for Behavioral Health and Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities at the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. A mouthful. That's all right. Dr. Brown is a Princeton, Chapel Hill, and Duke-educated professional with a lot of experience here in North Carolina, both at the State South Hospital and the prison system. So thanks for being here, Dr. Brown. My pleasure. Next to her is Dr. Mitch Princeton. He is the Director of Graduate Studies at UNC Chapel Hill. He specializes in clinical child and adolescent psychology. He's also an author, including the book Popular, The Power of Likeability in a Status-Obsessed World, which I assume is available where all fine books are sold, sure. like Amazon. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for both for being here. Like, I want to start out. These questions, these, these statistics that I just mentioned, a couple of them are startling to me. Um, Suicide is the second leading cause of death among 10 to 17 year olds in North Carolina, the 48% increase in 10 years. Dr. Brown, I want to start with you. I mean, what is going on with teenagers today that is different? Well, I, you know, I think this has honestly been an age old issue. What I'm hopeful about is that we are all talking about suicide now and I think it's so important that we dispel the myth that somehow asking about suicide will um, increase an individual's chance of death by suicide. That's absolutely not the case. In fact, not asking about um, suicide to, an, to a teen or a youth that's, that's struggling is, is the problem. And so you know, I'm very hopeful that we have a lot of initiatives going on in the state currently, particularly partnerships between the Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Public Instruction and the Department of Public Safety, all looking at how do we increase mental health awareness among students, among educators, uh, how do we prevent, and, uh, you know, I, I'm really glad that you put the phone number up first. Sure. I, I actually think if we all took, anyone that's listening took five seconds right now or 10 seconds to put 1-800-273-8255 and program it into your phone. I think we could save a life today just by doing that, just to have it in our, in our phone. And, and that's why I'm really glad that you mentioned that about the idea of not talking about it. Look, I've had, I've, I got some pushback on this, sh on doing this topic. Um, and we've heard that before about, if you talk about it, it's going to cause something. And, and I can understand in some ways, you know, there was a lot of controversy around the show on Netflix, 13 Reasons Why, mm -hmm. which I, I, there are some problematic things. I mean, there were some sort of, that was kind of a, almost like a revenge fantasy. That's one thing. But we wanted to talk about um, it from a, like, 
what's really going on and, and how do we help our kids? So let me ask you, Dr. Princeton, um, in your work and your research, um, um, same question, really. Are things, um, are things different um, today? Are, are kids dealing with things different than, than, than say, when I was a, a teenager? I think a little bit. We have seen a decrease in the mortality and morbidity of so many different physical illnesses, but in 50 years, we have seen no change in the rate of suicide, and as you say, it might even have increased. Suicide tends to increase in adolescence when we see economic downturn, times of stress, and other forms of stress, specifically interpersonal stress. Now, in the last five years, we're living in a very stressful time. In addition, Kids are experiencing stressors in new contexts and in new ways that most of us who are parents can't even imagine because we didn't grow up with these types of stressors in our lives. Right. I and mean, that's something that I, I, I do think about. Uh, I want to ask you both about this. Um, uh, you mentioned things that we didn't deal with. Social media is one of those. Um, I think social media sometimes is sort of the, it gets sort of, it's a catch-all boogeyman. Well, that's, that's really bad. And, and, but we also know these tools do expose children to things online, cyber stalking, bullying. Um, the, uh, your book, um, Dr. Princeton, about status and the, and the, 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 the push for being popular. Um, Dr. Brown and I'll ask both of you, do you think that there is um, uh, a, a correlation or potentially a correlation between social media and, and these increases? Well, what we do know is that about 40% of um, individuals who die by suicide have been bullied at some point in their lifetime. And we also know from the North Carolina Youth Behavior Risk Survey that one in three students in North Carolina report being bullied. So I, I, you know, I, th I think the facts are there to, to cause us to pay attention to bullying in all its forms. Right. Is, now, I mentioned self-harm, because I, I, I do want to talk about, we're mostly talking about suicide, but uh, the, particularly, again, I've got a, I have a, a teenage daughter, I've got a teenage niece, I, you know, of course, so I'm, I know a lot of their friends. I'm, I'm shocked to hear how many of them, um, again, suicide attempts. But the cutting, like in yeah. middle school, is there, are these all on the same continuum? I mean, is, is, is uh, I'll ask you, Dr. Princeton, you're nodding. Is, are, they, <laughs> are, they, are they, are they this, is there sort of like this continuum of sort of how you deal with stress and pressure? Non-suicidal self-injury, which cutting is one of the most re, uh, prevalent examples, it's become an epidemic. We have 7% of middle schoolers engaging in that behavior. We have at least 15 to 20% of kids in high school. One out of every five high school adolescents is experimenting with cutting. This is a remarkably high percentage. And what we know about this is first, it seems to be a behavior that kids engage in that's free and easily accessible to regulate their emotions. When they can't get a hold. Explain that. How, how, how does cutting regulate your emotion? So there's research now that shows that the part of our brain that seems to be suffering and uh, activated particularly when we're experiencing emotional distress is interestingly linked to the same regions of our brain that are affected by physical pain. So when one experiences pain and that pain ceases, the, the, the offset of that pain, it seems to also kind of shut down the emotional pain the kids are experiencing. We recommend that uh, a classic technique from dialectical behavior therapy is that kids, when experiencing that pain, might instead put an ice cube in their hands and let that ice cube melt. It, again, causes pain, but in a safe way that doesn't cause tissue damage. Wow. What's important about NSSI, I should say, is that it is now known to be one of the strongest predictors of actually attempting suicide as well. So even a child who is cutting needs to be taken very seriously of being at risk for So this is not one, I was suicide. gonna ask you, this is not uh, like, oh, they're just getting attention, you should, and I know we're gonna get into this, particularly in the second part of the show, mm -hmm. about what parents should do, but I hear this, Dr. Brown, that you take, we should take these things seriously if you're an educator, if you're a parent, uh, a, a guardian. Absolutely. In fact, there was a big study that just came out um, that was done in the UK. Uh, it's in Lancet Psychiatry um, in this April that looked at a huge cohort of children and adolescents in the UK. And basically, the, the strongest predictor of attempting suicide in, in individuals that had had suicidal thoughts was non-suicidal self-injury. Okay. So absolutely, it's, it's a warning sign that needs to not be ignored. Um, one of the things, we, we are seeing an increase in diagnoses of, of mental illness, whether it's, it's depression or anxiety, uh, things that, is part of that prevalence that we're seeing, could it be that we're actually talking about it more? That we're actually, 
I guess, could it be a good thing? I mean, could we be seeing uh, maybe more people seeking treatment, Dr. Princeton? It, it is a good thing that the stigma of mental illness is starting to abate. So we have adolescents who are willing to talk about their symptoms a little bit more freely. It is a bad thing that we don't currently have the mental health workforce that we need or the access to help treat all of these kids who are now expressing that they're in grave danger. Right. And I want to get as from a public policy perspective, mm -hmm. because I mean, your role is, 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 is medical, but you're really being in the mm -hmm. DHHS. We, where this is education matters, so obviously we're dealing with a lot where kids are. We know, for example, that uh, the National Association of School Psychologists recommends a ratio of one to 700, which still seems like a lot to me mm -hmm. for students. But here in North Carolina, it's more like one to 2,000. Mm -hmm. um, we have 13 school districts in North Carolina without a single school psychologist on the payroll. And then there are community uh, access. What, from a policy perspective, should we be thinking about? Absolutely. And I think the, the most important thing from a policy perspective is we really have to collaborate. We are not going to tackle the problem of youth suicide by any single government agency or any single community organization, right? We all have to work together. Uh, in uh, October of 2018, uh, we, North Carolina was, was awarded a grant where the Department of Health and Human Services is working with the Department of Public Instruction um, and the Department of Public Safety, so again, everyone at the table, uh, to do for NC Project Activate. And this is uh, gonna go on for five years and it's a project in the school systems and in the local communities with the idea being that we need to help students be aware of their own mental health. Right. Um, and we need to help educators be aware of what are the signs and symptoms of emotional distress. And uh, then we need to look at prevention and, and you know, what are the best ways to prevent. And I, I, I do wanna add one thing right there that it, so in North Carolina there were 44 youth suicides in 2018. Over half of them were using a firearm. And so one thing that we need to really be thinking about and is, is it's not just about, and, and this is the thing, a lot of people think that it's just about securing firearms. Right. Kids are smart. Right. It's, it's not just about securing firearms, they will find, find ways. So if you have a youth that's at risk for self-harming behavior, then you need to have a safety plan right. in order to not have access to that firearm. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that is, I mean, again, it's another one of those things that we, we tend to not want to talk about, sometimes politically, but it, it's again, just last, with, for you before we bring in our next guest, Dr. Princeton, you, you mentioned in your book, you talk about status and what is that pressure for kids now, uh, the idea of uh, being popular? Well, the, at the same point that we see this increased risk for suicide, we also know that adolescents' brains change. There's a part of their brains that makes them crave a desire to be influential and powerful, visible um, and dominant. And this area of the brain develops and makes them crave what we all thought of as being cool, but what we now know as also being a way of getting followers and retweets and whatnot. The important thing to remember is that while all of us have that temptation, adolescents have not yet fully developed the part of their brain that you can think of as the brain's brakes, the ability to kind of inhibit your desire to fulfill every urge or impulse. So there is a perfect storm where adolescents are strongly wanting to have that visibility or that status and will do anything for it, will even do anything they can to avoid um, any uh, consequence that may be associated with low status, but they don't yet have the ability to regulate carefully their emotions and behavior when things go awry. Gotcha. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. After that, we're going to continue our discussion and we're going to be joined by two more guests, a school social worker from Durham County and a Wake County mother who lost her 12-year-old son to suicide in 2017. Stick around. Education Matters is brought to you each week in part by Paragon Bank, serving others, enriching lives. <laughs> 